Hey guys and welcome back to another engine forward tutorial. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to create splash damage. So this should work for a potion, an explosion or anything, but I'm going to be doing a landmine in this example. So let me show you what this is going to look like. So let me hit play and I'll get in. And if I walk over this landmine, I'm going to get an explosion, they're going to go red and they're going to take damage. Now in this we're not really going to be bothering too much on the red, this is just to make them all take damage within a certain area. So I move this one out, this one now shouldn't take damage from this mine because it isn't close enough to it. So as you saw there, it didn't take damage, but if we put it back in the radius of this landmine, it's going to take damage when we blow it up, and as you can see the landmine is exploding when we walk on top of it. So this is what we make today, so without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we want to do is we obviously want to create this landmine, or whatever blueprint you want to use, again it could be a potion or a grenade, anything on those lines. So I'm going to right click, go to blueprint class and get an actor, I'm just going to name this landmine BP, I'm going to open that up straight away, like so. In here, what I'm going to do is add a component, and I'm going to add a cube. This is just my landmine static mesh, so this is what I want mine to look like. I'm just going to scale this down a bit, like so, just so it looks a bit better. I think that's going to be good for me. And then what else I want to do in here is add another component, so I'm going to add a box collision, like so. And I want this to be just a bit bigger than a landmine, so I might actually make the landmine a tiny bit bigger, just narrower, like so, and then just make the box collision a bit narrower, like this as well. And again, the box collision wants to be the same size as the landmine, so you make that ever so slightly bigger if you want, but I think that's going to be good, because this box collision is the trigger for what is going to cause this explosion. So again, if this is a grenade, then what you can do is just have it so when you throw it, but for me, it's when I walk on top of it, so I'm using this box collision. Then I'm going to deselect that, add another component and add a sphere collision and this collision is the radius of damage or the explosion. So if I scale this all the way up, basically if something is in at this radius, it's going to be affected by this damage, in this case an explosion. So this should work for potions as well, essentially this sphere collision is the radius in which they will take damage and splash damage. So I'm going to compile and save that. And what you can do as well is you can have multiple spheres, so we can get another one, make it slightly bigger, so if they're in this first one, the damage will be 50, and then if they're in another one out here, it'll be 25, and you can do that as much as you like, so the splash damage gets lower the further out you go. I'm not going to go into that, but it's very simple to do, and let me know if you want extra help with that. Then if we go into the event graph, we can delete these three events here, and what I'm going to do is right click the box collision, or the trigger for this landmine, add event, add a component begin overlap, and move this up here. If you want it to be so that the character doesn't trigger it, so it's only enemies, you can come out of other actor and cast to your character, and then come out of cast failed. Because if it is your character which triggered it, it will just be the normal execution, cast failed will be anything else. I'm not going to bother with that though, as I want my character to be able to trigger this, as well as anything else. And again, because this is a landmine, I want to make it explode. So off of this, I'm going to spawn emitter at location with the emitter template being the explosion that we get in the start content and the location is just going to be get actor location so it's wherever this actor a landmine is. I'm going to leave everything else the same and then after this I'm also going to get a play sound at location with the sound also being the explosion which we get with the start content and I've got the explosion queue location again being get actor location. Then after this I want to drag and drop in my cube and my box, so my landmine static mesh and the box collision which triggers it, and I just want to get a destroy component. So I can't trigger it more than once and the landmine has despawned. However I don't want to destroy the blueprint just yet because we still want to do some code. And the code after this is going to be actually damaging the actors. So what we can do is we can right click and get overlapping actors. Because we've used a sphere collision, anything within that sphere is going to be damaged. So out of the overlapping actors, you can see that is an array. So we want to get a for each loop. We don't need a break because we want to go through all of them. Plug the execution into destroy components there. And the array element, very simply, we'll just go into apply damage. And that is going to go into the loop body. So for every array element of the overlapping actors, it's going to apply damage. And I'm going to set the damage to be 40. And again, you can do this separately. So if it is another sphere collision, you can lower the damage or anything along those lines and you can just do that simply by right click, add event, and I'm going to begin overlap for the sphere collisions and then just set a variable named damage to whatever you like. 
for example, 40, 50, 20, anything along those lines. The damage causer, I'm also just going to get a reference to self, so we know that this landmine caused the damage. Out of completed of the 4-H loop, we want to get destroy actor, because now we are finished with this actor completely, we've finished with the blueprint, so we can just get rid of it and destroy it. We can compile and save, and that is all the code done that we need to do. Just to test it as well, what I'm going to do is get a print string after this. You don't need to do this, this is just for me to show that it's working. Out of array element, I'm going to get display name with that going into the print string there. And compile and save, and I'll show you the code in the AI. So what I've done is event any damage, so I should show you that as well. If you want to damage the AI, you go into their blueprint, right click and get event any damage. I do have videos going into this specifically as well, and I'll leave a link to that in the description down below. And after this, you can do whatever you like. So you can decrease the health by this damage variable set up here, which we decided in the apply damage node in our landmine. So it's very easy and simple to do. And again, the video should help with that. But what I've got is I'm not decreasing the health. I'm just making the actor look red. So we know it's been damaged. So now we can minimize this. I can drag in this landmine into the level. And you can see that the sphere perfectly reaches all of these. Could make it a bit bigger, but what I'm going to do is just move these a bit closer so I know they are definitely within the radius. Or if I move this one out of the radius so I can test this again, if I hit play, I go over, blow up the landmine, those three got damaged, and this one over here didn't. So that worked perfectly, and I just pushed that one out of the way by accident. But as you can see, this does work with splash damage. So I think that'll be it for this video. So we've done everything we've wanted to do. We've set it up so we have splash damage on the landmine that we've created. So we've A, set up a landmine which blows up when we walk on top of it, and B, set up splash damage so any enemies within radius or any actors within radius will get damaged by this as well. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.